always getting fired up on responsibility. Responsibility. It seems like it always goes there, isn't it? It's the, it's, what does it boil down to? It boils down to a zero. <laughs> yeah, it boils down to a zero. That it's really like, fucked up the mathematicians when zero came out. Yeah, I, who was the, uh, was he we in? have to look him up. Yeah. Was he in India, the guy who yeah, came yeah, up with zero? Yeah, and then they're like, ah. They're like, you sure about that? It doesn't have a value. Huh. Yeah, so because you have uh, uh, first principles, but there's a zero principles too that people don't understand. But look, we won't get into that. <clears throat> I look at it like, well, I'm going to get into it. <laughs> I look at it like this. Everything to the right on the number line, to the right of zero, the positives, mm-hmm. that's one dimension. Everything to the left in the negatives, that's another dimension. Zero sits in the interdimension. Mm. That interdimension essentially is like that function of choice area. Where's the value going to go to? You know, if you're looking at that curve, right, over towards infinity, what right. direction are you going to take? Oh, you're teeing me up right now. It's always directional. Right. Okay? It's always a function of choice. So if you're going to sit in that inner dimension and you're going to choose one side to polarize to, mm-hmm. positive or negative, which way are you going to go? And that's the question. And data solves that. Of course data solves and that. And Tartle's marketplace solves this because whenever we look at humans, we accept what it means to be human. And follow me on this. We accept what it means to be human. But our reality is distorted. People live their life, you know, whether it's it could be a religion, it can be a government, it could be, you know, lots of different things that they live, at, you know, like people will come out of something. They'll come out of a workplace and they're like, I can't believe it was, that was such an abusive place to work. I didn't recognize it when I was there, you know. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's like we have this distorted reality because we don't know what to value. But Some, data comes in. Do you see what I'm saying? And helps remind you <laughs> of what should be valued. And it's not saying go value this. Right. That is still up to you. Remember we talked about responsibility in the previous episode? Mm-hmm. It'll say this does carry much, much more value and benefit for your life, judging by what you have helped capture through your process and interaction with data. To say that, this is probably something that should be of value to you Mm -hmm. within your mindset and your perspective and in your actions. And you've been blind to these things because you pushed away value that was truly beneficial value. That was beneficial for your evolution value value. That was beneficial for your friends, family, coworkers, people that were collectively close to you. Even the energy of money. Yes. Creating value and how we can push that away. Yeah. We push that away all the time because we choose to, goof off be lazy right and being lazy and listen we're not saying you have to work all the time and be a hardo right Right. you know go close on some homes or some deals that's not it just understand your laziness well it's not even laziness understand that stagnation Mm. retirement leads to quicker death okay it leads to a lack of thought it Mm -hmm. hinders your evolution when you stagnate yourself and you don't afford yourself new catalysts right Mm -hmm. It's like you're working with the same old data set every single day. What's there to be learned? The data set stopped. Yes. Does that make sense yes. as a metaphor? No, uh, it makes perfect sense. I do that with Google Ads every day. <laughs> <laughs> same old stagnant <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Dude, don't get me started. Hey, Google, can you guys stop uh, messing with our ads yeah. at like 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> because you think you uh, have You have a better idea. Your yeah, AI you has don't. a better idea. It doesn't. It's a distorted reality and it does not provide me any value. Yeah, it does not provide <laughs> any. So just when we look at this distorted reality and what we value, then we have to look at data as being our data or your data or my data is the ultimate truth. Here's a cool part about data being the ultimate truth. Like mm-hmm. you say, data captures my thoughts. Mm-hmm. It captures what I do. And it also captures how others perceive me. Yes. Yeah. We walk around in our world in our sometimes distorted reality mm-hmm. and think that what I'm doing is correct or it's the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. And then you're upset because you have this idea that other people should be acting like you, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Data has the ability to bring multiple perspectives together at once and then refine that into a picture Mm -hmm. specific to you as an individual. Well, you know, this is a perfect example. I was talking to somebody, uh, food allergy tests. 
So one, he took food allergy test and spinach. He happens to be, they did like three tests on him and oh, spinach so just knocks him through the roof with, uh, you know, because food, you, you know this more than I do, but food in and of itself can be an irritant to the body mm-hmm. or it can heal the body and be nourishment. Yeah. It can inflame it. Yes. Yeah, so the inflammation, and that's what yeah. they're testing, the inflammation of certain things. Well, for him, spinach just happened to inflame. Carrots are fine. Acidic foods are fine with him. Jalapenos, all of that. You know, some people are really stuff. Do love to, jalops. But uh, yeah, same here. I have all kinds of peppers in there for my mm. salad. But for him, mm. it was like spiking it through the roof. You know, so anytime he had, some people are really allergic to bread. I know, am like yeah with uh, the gluten. I'll tell everybody right now. If I eat bread, I can't go to the bathroom. It shuts my digestive tract down. Yeah, my whole body breaks out in a huge rash. Yeah, it's a shame because so, I freaking love baguettes. You yeah, know what I mean? I love the baguettes. <laughs> oh man! But no, but I mean, you know, so everybody's unique and different. Precisely correct. And data is the ultimate truth. How we interpret the data can be false, but the data in and of itself is the truth. Because the data <laughs> that what is truth then? Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is because that's what it, that's what that's where this heads. Right. Truth is timeless. Truth aligns with the objective reality around all of us. Mm -hmm. It does not sit outside of nature. Truth is not abstract. Right. It's clear. It's straightforward. It doesn't need to be in metaphors. Okay. Truth. Truth is energizing. Mm Mm-hmm. Truth is uncomfortable. It can be comfortable too, though. No, I know. Mainly uncomfortable. Right. And almost at all times, truth is unpopular. Oh, yeah. People die because for the truth. Because truth forces people to be very honest with themselves. Mm. Mm-hmm. When I say people, that could be businesses, mm-hmm. that could be individuals, collectives, and the planet as a whole. Well, LLCs are considered humans. Yeah. According, to, yeah, the, according to the courts. <laughs> So when you say data is truth, it absolutely is. It doesn't have a dogma. It doesn't have some sort of distorted perspective. It is completely agnostic. It records what is absolutely happening in fact. And I think it's, I think it's, I I think we need to, let's delve into this a little bit more. So this distorted reality that we live in, you know, we're all, we all have neurochemical states. It's all biochemistry that's acting on our emotions and everything else. And I want to use the perfect example of this and and data sets is where we can look at. So what triggers the chemicals? Well, yeah. Yeah. So let's say Tartle's marketplace and we're doing a study Mm -hmm. and and we take, we take these suicidal people, let's say, you know, out of seven and a half million people, let's say we have a study of 10,000 people and they're at risk for suicide and they're, and they say, yes, you know, I could commit suicide anytime out of 10,000 of them. Okay. And then we're doing a study with, with this organization on this. Um, and we had, let's say this is five years from now, we have wearables and futures and stuff like that where we can collect a lot of data from them. Right. Now, all of a sudden, we began to find these collective correlations on data saying, oh, wow, they drank alcohol five nights in a row. You know, they're, they ate, they're eating really bad, shitty food. They don't see much sunlight. Yeah, they're not seeing what. Yeah, exactly. I, I, listen, there's I, lots of variables, and we're just yeah. making shit up right now. Yeah. It could have nothing. to I have do no with idea that. what a suicidal person. Yeah, I, I, their the, as far is. as mental health goes, but we do know, a hundred percent, that emotions are derived, and neuroscience tells us that it's neurochemical. Correct. There is a there's something off, and some people have more of a tendency to be more positive, and some people have a tendency to be more negative. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people can. Um, Lex Freeman was talking about this the other day. He's like, I feel like I'm on drugs all the time. He goes, I, it's just the weirdest thing because he goes, I can look at my cup and have like ultimate joy in the morning when I go to pour coffee and I just feel so excited. He goes, I just have this tendency always mm. to be in this, like, I'm, I'm happy all the time. And then I have this other side where I get too happy and I have to kind of calm it down. Right. So, but, so I imagine if you have that spectrum, you also have the other side of the spectrum where somebody's like, I don't even know what joy is. I've never really felt that. Never experienced it. And, and so now we're guessing, mm-hmm. but what if we had data and what if we could begin to see personal data on people 
with lots of subsets of data on different things that are happening in the body. I mean, you're going to have toilets collect data. I mean, that would be the number I, one the thing. That's going to be, be like, like every time we take a shit or piss. And it just analyzes. It's going to analyze everything. Dude, that is a business. Yes. That's brilliant. Yeah. No, but you're correct, though. You know. These, Prick our finger in the mornings. What we all look, that stuff. Yeah, what we look at is waste, mm-hmm. right? These things that are like, why would anyone look at that? Blah, 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 blah. You know. Clip your, you're going to clip your fingernails, clip your fingernails and, and, and then you can it. clip a little bit of hair and yeah. it's going to analyze shit. How often you clip them, how much comes right. off growth rate of your nails, all that. Yeah. Stuff. All that stuff. There's so much. The human has, the human has, we haven't even begun to understand ourselves. We're at point zero, 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 one percent of understanding the freaking universe. And we, listen, <laughs> we don't understand our oceans. No, we don't understand how to respect one another. We don't mm. understand the universe. We don't understand our DNA. None of these things. But data helps understanding. Yes, of course it does. Because it, it doesn't get lost. It's like the great diary of mankind. Mm-hmm. That's what data is. And it's a diary that we all have access to. We've all written it individually. But through this sharing of this truth allows us all to evolve, all to look past those distortions. I also think, you know, when we look at, at connectivity, when we can assign data... So if you if if these ten thousand people decided this suicidal ten thousand people and 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 they decided to say hey, you know we're going to start a Facebook group and we're going to talk about this. Mm-hmm. And some of us are going to stay anonymous and then some of us are going to be open. And then they're like through the data, they're like you know what, I'm not I you know Bill feels the same way too and you know Ludmila in Ukraine feels the same way too, you know I'm not alone. Yeah, you see how data collectively brings. It bridges this connectivity it. to ourselves. Because you thought you were one off. Yes. Yes. You are very special in your characteristics, which and makes super you valued. And super valuable. And you need to understand that there are many other people, many, and the probability is so high given how many there are of us that share right. those same thoughts and emotions. Mm-hmm. And if the data can bring people together to show them in a very real sense that there are others that are trying to work on the same thing that is challenging them, let data do that. And then, could you imagine, and data turns around and says, this is not your reality. Correct. This is you and 10,000 other people have this biochemistry thing that's off in your brain. Yeah. But that those chemicals are not your reality. No, and it's not. They're making you feel this emotion where you want to blow your head off. We're not but, blaming you. Right. There's no blame here. No. This that's is the bio, cool part about data. It this brings is biochemical. It's yeah. like it's okay. Mm-hmm. But now that we have recognized what is going on, let's work together to keep ourselves healthy, mm-hmm. to find that balance again. Well, human cognition is the largest data set. We were talking about that off the air. Yeah. So, you know, when we look at societal needs, the only answer to that is turtle marketplace. It's the only way you would ever understand the needs of society. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you'll ever ever understand the migratory patterns of society. And when, when we look at Tartle, because everybody, every investor you talk to and everybody that you talk to, they always say, well, this is the future. This is going to be the next big yeah, thing, duh. you know, whatever. But I believe that Tartle and, and data is the it's next scaffolding to bring us to the next level at, for humanity. You're right. Human 2.0, if you want to call it that. Through data, yeah. through Tartle, is right now is we're setting up that scaffolding to bring 2.0. I love that. Yeah, it's the support structure. Right. Well, we're the baseline. Well, it's gonna. Uh, you have to have a baseline. I don't. <laughs> I, I got to tell you right now, I think Tartle will afford humanity the next step in its natural evolution. Yes. Right there, and I have great, great hope in human beings. Oh, yeah, 100%. I have great hope in our ability to adapt to change. Mm-hmm. And I have great hope that we will continue to preserve this planet in our own lives further into the future. Well, solutions are mapped by data. They're all mapped They're by They're visualized data. by data. I mean, if you have to go in a direction, you need a map. Correct, which is data <laughs> statically put on a piece of paper, right? Yeah, and, and reasoning comes from this collective data. Yeah. It comes from you as an individual and then it comes from those around. So if you want logic and sound reasoning, you go to the data. You look to the data. You go to that source. 
and Tardo, and I want you to speak to this because this is an important word. So, um, and then we'll, we have to end this episode, but um, Tardo will help you get past the illusion. What you thought was real in your world, what you thought was helping or harming you, may, marry, <laughs> may very well be an untruthful perspective about what's really going on. Mm-hmm. Going on Tartle will afford you the opportunity to reflect on your actions. It will afford you the opportunity to earn from truth that you are creating. And then from that, it will give you the opportunity to be responsible with your actions going forward. And remember, Tartle will not do those things for you. Tartle will allow you to do those things for yourself. Mm. And there are very few, very few tools or platforms that will afford that sort of opportunity and awareness to eradicate an illusion of reality that is essentially creating harm to yourself and others.